How to make a velouté sauce. Hi guys, my name is James Howe, this is Chef at Home and welcome back to my masterclass. And today we're going to be covering the second of our mother sauces, which if the title didn't give it away, is a velouté sauce, which again comes from a roux. Today I'm going to show you a blonde roux and how to tell the difference. We're also going to be looking at how to make the velouté sauce itself and what derivatives or second tier sauces that will allow you to make. But of course, before we start, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you each week for more of this masterclass every Monday and every Friday, more of my favourite dishes that I'll be showing you how to cook. But with all that being said, let's get cracking with the knacking. Cracking with the knacking, never saying that again. So to kick off our velouté, the first thing we need today is make the blonde roux. So straight in into your pan, medium heat, in with your butter. Now previously with the bechamel, we only melted our butter to the point where it was just about melted, which took about two, three minutes. With this one, because we want to take it that extra step and want to make it that little bit darker, we're going to be cooking it for about four to six minutes to get a nice hazelnut brown colour to the butter. So the butter is now browned quite nicely. It took about five and a half minutes. And just to show you that, we pour that into that container. You don't need to do this bit, but it is just to show you the depth of colour and it's got to that nut brown stage. Back in there sunshine. Now just like we did before, we're going to add in our flour. <clears throat> Voice bro then, freaking up. Try that again, we'll add in our flour. And just like before, with a little bit of stirring, the roux has come together, come off the sides of the pan, I'll just show you here, it has created exactly the same paste that's formable into a ball, but it's got that extra depth of colour, and colour equals flavour. So if you can remember last time, our bechamel, the liquor that we put into it was that infused milk. This time it's not. What we're using is what would be a white stock. So either a vegetable stock or a chicken stock, that if you've been following this masterclass you will have previously done. If you haven't, check back to that video and see how it's done from there. So I've got mine here and exactly the same. I'm just going to add a little bit at a time until it's completely incorporated and then add yourself a little bit more. Once all your stock is incorporated into the sauce, I'm going to leave it to simmer. Coming back to it every couple of minutes just to give it a quick stir and give it a little bit of loving. I find with the mother sauces that are stock based you can get away with putting a little bit more liquid in because they will continue to cook and thicken as they reduce and it will happen quite rapidly. So far I've told you the difference between a bechamel and a velouté, I've shown you how to make the velouté. Now we're going to talk about what the velouté can become. So like all mother sauces this is the bedrock of so many others literally millions of variations that you can make with it, which is why it's so vital to know how to do these base skills. Some of the more well-known derivatives or second tier sauces is the velouté can become the Venetian, which is where you add chopped tarragon and chervil, or an almond, which is lemon juice and, and boiled eggs, or it can become the nicest gravy for a roast chicken you will ever have in your life. Depending on what stock you've used, if you use vegetable stock, that can be part of a vegetarian dish, if you've used a chicken or a fish stock, it makes the perfect marriage of sauces for those as well. So tell me in the comments below what you would make with a velouté. What would you add? And of course, what dish is it going with? That is my challenge to you. So the velouté is lovely and smooth. You can see why it's given in its name now. Consistency wise, absolutely bang on. Storage wise, same as before, three days in the fridge, once cooled, about a month in the freezer. But we will be using these very soon on the masterclass. So if you want to, by all means, have a couple of practices, use one, keep one, whatever works best for you. We're going to be covering more mother sauces as the weeks go on. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.